your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Norton at last. Everybody else in your office gone? Slightly. It's only ten after six and you're a half hour late. I am. You know, going out to dinner in New York has to be started earlier or else you don't get in. Mama, you here already? Already, did you say? Still would be slightly more accurate. One half hour late. It is not a half hour late. Mm -hmm. Well, look at your watch. I haven't it on. One half hour late, anyway. Twenty-five minutes. I'm supposed to be here at quarter of six, and it's ten after. That's 25 minutes and not a half an hour. It's bad enough. Well, what's the matter? Don't you two like being left alone together? Not when we expect you bursting in any minute. Well... That's telling her, Mother. Besides, if we're in such a hurry to be going someplace, my being a little bit late... One half hour late. Twenty-five minutes late. (laughs) If it makes such an enormous difference. Let's get going. Stop talking around so much. Come on. Whatever you may do to it, David. I'll never blame you. Thank you, Mother. Oh, now, look, you two. Just because a girl's a little bit late, 25 minutes, no reason to stand around and try and make her feel as if she pulled the wings off a butterfly. I'm sorry. I apologize. I feel simply awful about it. I couldn't feel worse, and that is that. Well, you don't look sorry. Can I help it if I have a face that never looks sorry? My heart is bleeding, bleeding. Come on, let's go. I haven't all night. Yeah, she hasn't all night. No. Well, we might as well go, David. Her Royal Highness doesn't like to be kept waiting. You both ready? Why this uh, sudden rush all of a sudden, Royal Highness? Well, you don't want me to get a ticket, do you? No, I don't want you to get a ticket. Did you say get a ticket? Of course, a ticket. And if I get one, I will know whom to blame. Go on. Now, David, you know as well as I do that people get tickets for parking on express streets. Now, do you or do you not want a ticket? Do I want to? Well, I'm not going to take the responsibility on my own my own shoulders. Policeman told me it was all right for me to leave the car parked for two minutes. Two minutes. That's all I'd have needed to come up and get you. But if you and Mama are going to stand around making mountains out of molehills, the ticket will be your Claudia. responsibility. Claudia. What? Did you drive the car downtown? Well, how do you think it got parked outside the building? Why do you think I was 25 minutes late? Well, you didn't have an accident, did you? David, of course not. I might not be here at all if I'd had an accident. We thought of that. But I was late because I was going round and round looking for a parking space. And it wasn't until I told the officer you'd be wild with me for being so late, even though it wasn't my fault, that he let me park the car in front of the building. Nice of him. He said he was married, too. So don't blame me. But if we get a ticket... I thought I told you never to drive the car downtown. That was a year ago, darling. That was Monday when we came into town. Huh. How time flies. (laughs) How time flies. Why did you drive the car downtown? Do you want to kill people? Yes. No. I mean, I drove the car downtown so we'd have it. But we don't want it. We don't need the car to go out to dinner. Oh, well, you never know when it'll come in handy. (laughs) We won't eat all night, I hope. You ready, Mama? Put your hat on. Let's go. Come on. My hat's on. What are we waiting for? Before I move one inch, Claudia, why? Did you bring the car downtown? You knew we were meeting at the office merely to go out to dinner. Yes. Then why? David, you'll get a ticket if you keep asking me questions like this, ask me in the car. You just felt like driving the car around in traffic, I suppose. That's not a good enough reason, is it? No. Well, then, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Mother, mother, you lived with her 18 years. I've lived her only one and a half. Now, what do I do now? Exactly what she says. Let's go down to the car, David. Claudia, Claudia, you left the motor running. Why, certainly, David. What do you mean, certainly, David? Now, David, don't get excited. I'm not getting excited. Not yet, but you you sound as if you're going to. 
confused. Why, on top of everything else, did you leave the motor running? Because it was the only way I could convince the officer I'd only be two minutes. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think it was very clever of me to suggest it, don't you? Whether you think so or not, I do. I figured that the price of the gas for those two minutes is a lot less than you're paying a fine on a ticket you'd receive. We'd better just get in the car, David. You see, Mom agrees with me. I'm driving, so you both get in from this side, please. I will drive. Oh, no, you won't. After all, the car was my idea against your better look, judgment. Look, look, I don't want to argue. I know you must have a reason for all of this because even you are more sensible, but I will not allow myself to be careered through New York traffic with you at the wheel. I don't want to argue either, David, but I am driving. I have a reason. Yes, I was afraid so. What is it? Just get in. David, stop looking as if you lost your last friend. I have. Mama... You are a traitor. I am the wiser part of valor. I give in first, argue later. It saves time. I promise to keep both hands on the wheel, one foot on the clutch, one on the brake, one on the gas. Well, I'll lend you one of mine. Thanks, I'll need it, won't I? <laughs> I promise not to talk to the passengers while the vehicle is in motion. And I will love, honor, and obey all traffic signals, so help me. Now get in and shut up. Yeah. Well, you win. I will go down in history as being the most maligned henpecked, persecuted man who ever lived. He's sweet, isn't he, Mama? He's more than sweet. He's remarkable. I like him, too. That's why... That's why... Well, go on. Get in the car, Mama. Don't ask any questions. David's right. You're impossible. No, oh, you don't know how impossible I am. David, you in the car? Mm-hmm, and praying. Well, here I come. You got enough room, David. Yeah, I'm fine. Now lean in and I'll close the door. Uh, go ahead. Come <clears throat> over. I feel like a piece of corned beef. And I'm the pickle. Off we go. <laughs> uh, you can breathe now, Mama. They say the takeoff is the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. And what was the matter with that? You're not supposed to speak while the vehicle is in motion, remember? David, you certainly don't think I'm going to just sit here and not, not talk. talk. No, no, you are. Now, Mrs. Brown, where do you wish the driver to take us to dinner? As nearby as possible. Now, I see what you mean. Claudia. Claudia. I saw the car, David. You'd never know you saw the car, David. You'll do me the favor of not pushing your foot into the floor like that. There's no break there. You only wear out the floorboards. Besides, it's insulting, and it makes me nervous. <laughs> it makes you nervous. No. Honestly. Ugh. Woman driver. It happened to be a man. Well... He drove like a woman. Why so that proves you can't criticize. Uh, why don't we have dinner at that French restaurant on 48th Street and 1st Avenue? Perfect with me. And you, Claudia? Oh, she's not talking. That's so. Mm, bliss. Oh. Turn right here, darling. We want to go east. Uh, cl turn. Claudia, you didn't turn. I know. You know. Yes. When you're going west instead of east, why didn't you turn? I'm going west. I can't go east at the same time. You know, sometimes she makes sense, David. Yeah, sometimes. Why are we going west? Why? Oh, oh why? I just like going west, no, my I man. <laughs> to the west lies gold and riches in the hopes of... The red light. I see it, David. Claudia, do you have a restaurant all picked up? Yes, yes. I see, I see. Is it nearby? Oh, an hour or so. But an hour these days is no distance at all. Is it across the state line into Connecticut? Mm, could be. Green light. I see it. Is it uh, very home cooking? Very, just for us. What's going on here? Would somebody mind telling a poor old woman in the dark? Tell her, David. Yeah, I think, uh, Mrs. Brown, that your daughter thinks she's going to drive us up to the farm for dinner. All the way up to the farm? It's only an hour, Mama. For dinner? Out of a clear blue sky? Well, we're expected. I called Fritz and Bertha earlier. But what on earth for? Oh, I thought it'd be nice for a change. We haven't been home all week. Baby's mistress and majesty and the heifer, all the animals, they missed us. So I thought we'd go back to dinner with them. Mm -hmm. Very thoughtful of you. You think so, David? And what are we going to do? Drive all the way back after dinner? Mm, not especially. You, you didn't forget my razor, did you? I of course hope. not. I packed it. You mean we're... Claudia, you're planning to stay at the farm. Well, Mama, it's home. You needn't sound so horrified. David, did you know about this? Nope, nope. We're staying too, Mama, so stop worrying about a late train back to New York. But I can't stay. I haven't any things up there. Oh, yes, you have there in the back of the car. 
I hope I brought the right things for you, but then I... You packed my things? Certainly. But I'm not going with you. Why not? Because I have other plans. Oh, nonsense. Your other plans were us. We're going so you can go, too. Oh, David, just thinking an hour we'll be back on the farm. I haven't dared think about it all week. <laughs> you missed it, too, huh? I've had all the New York in my system I want. I know we had to be here for a while because of your work. I know, too, that half of it was for me, so... I'm giving my half back to you. Let's go home. It's all decided. We're going. Not I. Now stop that car. Let me out. Mommy, your bags are packed. I packed them all afternoon. I don't care what you did all afternoon. I'm not going with you. You may not like New York, but I do. Will you listen to her, David? She just feels she hasn't been properly invited. Well, if that's the case, I'll invite her properly. Why don't you stop the car and I'll drive? I can do it. We'll get there faster. We will? All right. She's all yours. I will. Get out. Run around. Then all you have to do is slide over. It's yours. Don't go away without me, though. Enough self-discipline, Mrs. Brown. You're coming with us. Look, David. I made the break a few months ago. I don't want to start everything all over again. Now, now, now. There's nothing to start. Claudia is not a mama's baby. She's a woman. And she can take you or she can leave you. So I think you'd better take my advice and come along with us when you were I know, invited. David. But you know she's always held so tight. I'll tell you what you do. You trust me. I will. I invite you for the weekend like any other guest, and you can leave like any other guest. There are absolutely no barriers. Is she coming, David? You bet she's coming. I told her. I told her that I wouldn't waste any time driving her home, and that settles it. That's all. Lazy, isn't she? No, well, lazy. Push over, Mama. Get over. Well, yeah, I'm squashed. Good. Squashed is good. I don't know why I let myself get tied up with you two good-for-nothing scattered brains. Well, you want to know, Mama? Yes, sir. The reason for that is because you are one of those scattered brains that make it three scatter brains. And another reason, most important, Mama. Well, what's that? Because you love us. Well. Because we have a farm and because that's where we're going. Home at last. We have been shanghaied, Mama, so hold on to your hat. Old MacNaughton had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a car. E-I-E-I-O. With a tip. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you're shopping, when you're walking down the street with a friend, when you're driving along the highway or going to the movies, the sight of that familiar red cooler reminds you to pause and refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Come to think of it, you have a white cooler for Coke standing right in your own kitchen. It's the family refrigerator. Keep Coke on ice, and you can stop at the white cooler whenever you're ready for the pause that refreshes. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. (laughs) 